What is a fellow bench warmers? This is your daily fantasy quickie. Hey guys, what's up? My name is JJD of the Fantasy Bench Warmers with Komish. Komish Eric, welcome to another quickie, another day, another quickie for us, Komish. Uh, yep. We've got lots of good news today. Right? Relatively. Relatively, Relatively yeah. some good news to the big stars. Um, mm-hmm. But Not uh, all, but uh, a lot. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's talk about some of the the names. Uh, James Harden closing in on a return. Maybe if not this week, next week, right? Monday, Monday. I think start of week week seven is next week. Week seven or week eight? eight. I don't, uh, week eight. The start of week eight. He is uh, reportedly gonna be coming back already. So um, that's bad for of course Shake Milton. Uh, yeah. I think he's. The, because people are asking if it's Milton or Milton is going to be affected. Well, it's obviously, it's Milton. Milton, yeah. will, Milton will still be there. I think he's going to start beside Harden. Especially, they need this defense. Milton does similar things with Harden. Basically, point guard, bring down the ball, facilitate. So, Milton, by that time, probably would be... Uh, A drop. drop. Yeah. But, but I won't do it right away because what if Harden be injures himself? Or, not on wood, but... It's possible. It's still possible given Harden's conditioning. Yeah. Um, so whatever was the setup before Harden got injured, that's that's the setup that's going to be right. I mean, minus maybe max. So maybe you could you know wait like Commissioner don't drop immediately Milton because Maxi's not there, right? I think the last time Harden was playing, Maxi was still there. I think Maxi would probably be out another couple of weeks two to three weeks maybe um probably probably yeah yeah but so, not too far off also not too far off already yeah, probably a couple of weeks give or take so maybe milton could have some value there uh to replace maxi temporarily or maybe come off the bench so let's just you know don't immediately drop maybe wait a couple of games one or two games to see how that goes um dame is also set to return soon yeah uh, is it this week next week um december 4th is what i think that's this week that's this week december 4th yeah december 5th here that would be next week be the last already. day that's that would be the last day of uh this week yeah the last day uh, the, the game the last day so that's that's good news also good news um let's see though if players like jeremy grant could take a step back. They, obviously, they will take a step back. But, of course, obviously also, the, they, they won't be droppable players uh, as well as Simons. Yeah. Um, maybe Winslow takes a little hit because Winslow's the guy benefiting right now from no Dame, right? Um, I'm not sure if he played. He usually comes off the bench, though, uh, when Dame plays. So, And at times can be a streamer. So maybe... Maybe he could have a little bit of value, but uh, he will be the player that's going to be hit most likely, right? Yeah, we Winslow played well today. He's actually one of he's the actually played players well people. when he plays. Yeah, he plays well yeah, when he, he plays. He's okay. He's okay. But um, talking about Simons, he's six points less average with 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 Dame there. Uh, yeah. compared to his current average without Dame is around 26, 27. Uh, Jeremy Grant also a little lower, but I checked the numbers of both. Uh, Jeremy Grant's averages go down less than Simon's, which is common sense, uh, obviously. Uh, Simon's is more connected to Dame than Jeremy Grant to Dame, but both of them, of course, will be affected. Um, when slow, probably is going to be a drop when, when, when Dame comes back. But uh, check on Josh Hart, because Josh Hart, Missed today's game with with a sprained ankle, so uh, let's see if he's gonna be he's, he's gonna be com- uh, able to come back soon from that injury. Yeah. Uh. So that's the Chris Middleton finally. Well, he hasn't returned, but it looks like he's gonna return this week. Uh, it was said either Friday or I think Saturday Manila time, right? Is the target date against the Lakers? I think. Oh, Middleton, Chris Middleton. 
is it I don't I'm not sure if it's against the Lakers, but yeah, I think this Friday this week. So if it's the Lakers, then then a great matchup for him right away. Uh marquee matchup for him. I, I just said that it's about time <laughs> yeah. that uh he he comes back and I, I hope that given Imagine imagine Jaron Jackson Jr. came yeah. back first. <laughs> yeah, and, and given how long he's it's been out for just a wrist injury, I hope that there's less rust. Less conditioning needed, less minutes restrictions, yeah. less, less 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 everything. You know, that's the only thing I I I hope will happen. Given we waited for seven to eight weeks of the season, where it's supposed to be just one or two weeks for yeah. the season. Yeah. Uh, so players affected here. Um, well, Grayson, Grayson, Javon Carter. Well, yeah. Pat Connaughton just returned also, and I was actually someone I was monitoring. But if Middleton comes back, um, it's hard to find, hard to see him have value like the previous years because they seem to be deeper this year. They have their rookie Marjon Beauchamp, and of course Javon Carter has stepped up. So uh, that will make Milwaukee probably not a good streaming team. Yeah, not a good team to find value. Well, they're Only usually the, you know four five deep when yeah, it comes to like you that. know. When it comes to their fantasy relevance, right? We have Yanis, Drew, Middleton, Brooke, and maybe mm. Bobby Portis, right? And then yeah, know, Bobby Portis, yeah. Gray- Grayson probably comes in as a streamer. Even Conaton, probably those two becomes uh, more of a streamer, really. Although now they're Grayson is more of a streamer, really, and and maybe Javon Carter. So, but yeah. They're that five deep only when it comes to bad serial. Um, uh, the biggest news though, or I guess the good news though, is the Robert Williams news. Uh, when we thought that he might return sometime next year, uh, it looks like he's scrimmaging, he's practicing right now, I think. Uh, so that's yeah. good news, and it looks like December is a possibility. End of December is a possibility, but I would. It's just my guess. I think it's going to be January. And they always say these things that we target this, we target that. But I think given the standings of the Celtics, and it's better to just let it slide into the new year and then let him come back. Because, uh, you know, it's tough to come back in December, you know, when everybody's watching, everybody's... December 25 actually wants to come back Christmas Day. So I think maybe early January would be more realistic for him. But it's soon. That means it's very soon. And some people might think Al Horford will not be affected, but I think he will. Um, he's not been playing... Well, he's top 100, but you know it's not what we expected uh, yeah. when Williams is out. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe his stats would still be like that when he plays less minutes, when Williams is back. You know? I mean, yeah. he doesn't rely on volume. You know, just, just my thing. He doesn't rely on volume. You can get six points, five rebounds, six assists, good percentages, couple of steals, couple of blocks. So overall, maybe the rankings will stick, but the impact, I think, of Al Horford on your team, if you're not in a roto league, is going to be minimal. <laughs> if it's, really if it's head-to-head, you probably won't feel it. Like, it yes. won't give you the big numbers that you were probably looking for uh, he also won't give you some nice scoring games, right? So I think uh, overall it won't be as good. Um, and here, I worst case scenario, he's probably just gonna be a streamer when Robert Williams comes back. That's that's what I think. But having said that, uh, we don't know how good or how healthy or how. They would play Robert Williams. Uh, would yeah, be that's minutes, true. minutes limit restrictions. How long for it would that be? How long will before he gets into you know, hundred percent all out for the team? I think stream streamer is a little harsh. Maybe not. Maybe not a streamer. No, come on. <laughs> a streamer. Okay, <laughs> so a streamer. let's put it this way. Right now he's top one hundred. That's fine. I I think he is top one hundred because of the percentages, yeah. low turnovers. But really, you don't feel him as much. The stocks aren't there. The rebounding mm, is, are okay. Uh, his scoring are okay. <laughs> you, He's you actually really... 47. But I understand your point. 
very much. Because look at the numbers, 10.9, 6.3 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.9, 0. 0.4 steals, 0. 0.9 blocks. As we said before, he's averaging 0. 0.7 turnovers. And turnovers really, you know... Yeah, and what's the field goal? 56, 55, yeah. 56. So, but he takes seven, seven attempts a game. So, really, uh, roto-wise, this is good. But head-to-head, uh, I understand what Jeremy is saying. He's top 100, but where's the impact really? Where, where, where does he really, you know, uh, affect your team? You know, just give it's, your team a fighting chance. Right. Here's, here's my take. When, when Robert Williams comes back, he's probably going to be a tad bit better than Hardenstein, which is not saying much. Uh, I, that's, I, I, I'll probably not go that far. Uh, Hardenstein's been bad because the percentages are bad also, and it's not doing really nothing. That's why a little with, with, better. With, well, with Horford, there's a three-pointer. So he's averaging two and a half. So I think that sticks. I think the three-pointers can stick at two. I think the blocks... Well, at almost one, I think that's okay. The rebounds will be okay. So I think he helps in those categories, but he's probably going to be your end of the bench kind of a guy. He yeah. will help teams. He will help teams that are very balanced. But if there, if like there is teams that are really, doesn't really care about field goal or maybe, or maybe efficiency as much. They won't value mm, him as much too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fairness though, I know, it could be a little harsh, but my expectations are just very low. Um, last year, when Robert Williams was out, Al Horford was really good. Remember, some three yeah. key steals, three block games, right? So th- those were some of the stat lines you can give you. That's why the drop-off was not as bad, right? You, you feel a little better with the drop-off. But with the current stats that he has, if it drops off, then he'll probably end up, you know, in the waiver wire or, or yeah, somewhere so, well, in a well, maybe in any a more, team league, right? Well, if there's any more drop off from this, yes, I understand it from I understand your point, but I think it will stick somewhere just close enough. Yeah, close he's gonna enough. be better than most of the players there in the waiver wire. He probably he's gonna be more consistent as well. Um, but yeah, and then he's gonna miss back to back. That's another issue that you're gonna be yeah annoyed about. Uh, so um, we're not saying you drop him right now or you trade maybe, him you trade him or add him in a package maybe uh, to improve your team but expect a drop off a spread uh, best Horford, case is, I have uh, some I have a lot of other Horfords um, well, I think I have four or five um, a, a third of my teams have one have one Al Horford um, so yeah Robert Williams set to return. Um, hopefully sooner than later. Um, on the flip side, we've got some new injuries. John Collins, probably the biggest name here, and probably the worst uh, injury. I don't know how bad it was, but it didn't look good. Didn't look um, good. Didn't look good. Um, actually, the DeAndre Hunter injury also is scary for me because it's a re-injury yeah. so maybe they, they, they rest him they, both of these two players are gonna do an MRI which just shows you that they it's probably worse than a normal minor injury so I well we have seen worse injuries turn out to be nothing like Bojan or, yeah. or Ja so we will have to wait we'll have to wait but we have to prepare uh, in case they're gonna miss some time uh it's easier, you know, in these two players are are rosterable players, but they're probably not your top guys, right? Except for maybe John Collins, one of your top 60, 70 picks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it it won't hurt as much uh, compared to maybe uh Carl Anthony Towns missing six to four to six weeks, right? Uh, but there will be players who can benefit. AJ Griffin, we know, has benefited from the Andre Hunter uh, missing time. Yes. Uh, yes. Jared Culver's name has been popping up in, in the waiver wire. I don't know if that would stick as much as the AJ Griffin one because we haven't seen much of uh, Culver. 
Um, I haven't seen a lot of Colbert. I, 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 I've seen him in college. I really watched him a lot in college. But in the NBA, he can't sh- seem to shoot well. Now, I'm shocked. A point guard, supposedly, is now playing power forward. Maybe this is what he needs to unlock whatever talent, skill, or value he has in the NBA. Because he was a sixth pick overall. Now, he had 12 rebounds today, but it was a blowout. So a lot of the garbage time he was playing. But he had one steal and one block. This guy's a good uh, stocks guy in mm. college and all, more of all around. But he can't shoot again. If he's a power forward, that would be that that would be good. But I don't know how. I don't know how he looks now, to be honest, because I remember him to be very thin. So, I, but in the NBA, anybody can play power forward or center at least these days, anyways. So somebody to if you're in deep leagues, I, I'm in a twenty team league. I picked him up. You know, just. Just see, you see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, nothing, not expecting a lot. Not expecting a lot. Uh, fourteen. He's probably going to be a streamer. Nah. Uh, but streamer. I'd rather yeah. pick AJ Griffin for now. Uh, yeah. I think he's a pickup. Uh, because these are two players. This is just, just the other other. Of course, Griffin is a, a rookie, so expect expect some ups and downs. But I think he is the ad that I would want. Uh rather than Culver. And tomorrow, there's only going to be one game. So that's the best time to make some adjustments on your rosters, right? You can't do much, really, uh, about tomorrow. Yeah. Not a lot of streamers on 14 teams um, I, available. I actually, I actually prefer just saving the move than yeah. trying to go to a JaVale McGee, uh, I know, a Cleaver, a Josh Green. Yeah. Maybe they, they maybe they explode, but I mean the chances are really slim that, that happens. So it's better, you know, just save it for later this week, maybe when you need it more. So yeah. that's what I've been doing. I'm not trying to chase a streamer from yeah, there'll be very limited, you know, players. If you look at the other if your opponent doesn't really have much players or maybe not the not the what who, who what's the game not luca right uh yeah you won't really be afraid or you won't really actually only luca <laughs> yeah <laughs> only, it, it, only if your opponent has luca then it will impact your matchup but if it's any other player killian hayes or maybe i don't know if unless I someone unless someone has a big game unless someone well unless started. someone has seven pistons and Mavs players. Yeah. Uh, yes, a lot of players tomorrow. Then you know that that, that can hurt your 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 team. Yeah. Um. So that's John Collins and DeAndre Hunter. Chris Boucher. What happened to Chris Boucher? I thought he did. He was. He, he fell. Was... He, he fell hard. Uh. Then, well, people falling hard sometimes is nothing. Sometimes there's a contusion. There's something. So he went to the locker room. Didn't come back. So we don't know. Um. If it's bad, but even before he went to the locker room, he was bad. <laughs> I don't know if the injury is bad, but Chris Boucher was bad. He was still playing twenty plus minutes, but he basically didn't do anything again. Since Siakam came back, he's not done much. So is he a drop? Uh, if if it's tough, you know, I I'll probably look if there's anybody in let's, their way. Let's just put him in a category where in he could be a drop. In 14s, uh, if you have someone better. Um, yes, yes. Some, right? some, something like that. Something like that. Not yeah. automatically a drop. Or mm, streaming, though, I'm not even sure. Maybe you should wait a few more games before streaming the spot in case he's your worst player. Um, AJ uh, Griffin for Boucher? Yeah, something like that. I I I could I could see doing something like that. He th- th- though the thing is Boucher, Boucher uh, still had twenty six minutes today. Still had 22, 22 the other day. So the minutes look like it's still there, and there's no new updates about the injury being bad. So I would probably give him one or two more games. I'll probably give him one or two more games. Now if there's any news that he's gonna miss a week or something, I'm gonna drop. It. I'll, I'll put him in the IL or drop him. But if he's gonna play the next game, probably okay. I'll give him one or two games because he's shown that he, you know, we know we know what Boucher can do. Let's we give some Boucher choices: is. Justice Winslow or Boucher. Boucher for now, right. Boucher because Winslow, as we said, until Monday only when Dame comes back. So maybe not. So AJ Griffin over Boucher. 
for now, I, I can make that switch. But they're very different players. But yes, I can make that switch. Uh, Austin Reeves, some of your uh, waiver finds. Austin Reeves over Boucher. I like Austin Reeves. Yeah, he's been very good this year. I'll go with Reeves. I'll go with Reeves. Right. Jalen Noel or, or uh, Boucher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jalen Noel. Uh, I'll go with Noel. Kyle uh, Anderson. Kyle Anderson over Noel. Yeah. Um. Yes. A lot of people like Noel over Gal Anderson. I just, I just like the, the the more safe, chill, slow, slow. You know, just no. Gal just... Anderson is a more uh, multi-category type of player. He can contribute in a yeah. lot of categories. Noel maybe threes and points, and a few steals maybe, but that's about it, right? He's not your across the board type of player, and he can shoot bad. Badly, uh, in, in case he doesn't, uh, he, he's, his shots aren't falling. He can, it can be bad in the field goal. Although, o- over the series of you know games that he has played this season, I think rarely do you see him having bad shooting nights. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also like Jaden Noel, but uh, again, it's a matter of preference. If you need threes and points, you probably go with Jaden. If you need, you know, some blocks, some steals. Some rebounds, you probably go with Cal Anderson. Uh, so yeah, that's Chris Boucher. Who else got injured? Herb Jones got injured. Yes, coming off a career, a season best game. Yeah. Um, looks like he's going to miss some games. Who I benefits think. here? Larry Nance? Three. Three still benefits. Dyson yeah. Daniels, actually. That's the guy I put here. Three, three already. Uh, we already talked about Trey. Yeah, he's number one. But I'm sure he's not available. But he's going to get a boost. More boost. Um, with Ingram still out now, Herb out. I think Dyson Daniel, somebody we have not talked about, the rookie. He's gotten 25, 27, now 31 minutes. So uh, the minutes are getting there. He's like Kyle Anderson. If you want to, to think about what kind of player he is, he's like Kyle Anderson. as jack of all trades. He can't shoot also. Really a bad shooter, but of course the Pelicans have their shooting coach. Uh, mm-hmm. I forgot the name, the coach that helped. You um, know. Chip. Uh, Chip. Engel. I think Chip and somebody else. They have another another shoot, shooting coach. You just read it somewhere uh, today. Um, they're helping him with the shooting, but of course it will take time. Um, so, but but so far he's been doing well uh, lately. He's been performing well. The minutes are there. So I would, uh, if 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 our Jones is out. Maybe, maybe give him a look also if you're in deeper leagues. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, those are who else? Do you have another one? Norm Powell, he is out. It reminds me of the Cam Johnson thing last year. Where in, um, Cam, remember, Cam Johnson had a career game and then suddenly was out for weeks. I hope this yeah. is not the case for Norm Powell. No, no, no. Uh, well, for Norm, I saw the play. They, they, I, I looked at Twitter. I saw it was the last play, last play of the game. He, when he was coming off a screen, uh, he, I don't know if it was hit or anything. It was the groin, and then he was limping to the bench, talking, saying something, and he was really in pain. The that groin, and then they said it's strain, strained groin, not pain, groin, strained groin. So I think he will be out. A oh, while, <laughs> because groins and then strain groins didn't look didn't sound good. That didn't sound good. Uh, all right. Uh, we had some returning players, Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony. Uh, unlike what we predicted, it was Markel Fultz who started. Yes, we initially thought it was going to be Cole, Cole, and then right yeah. and Fultz, and but Cole had a higher. Minutes restriction. Then I mean, he. I think his minutes restriction was around twenty minutes, and then Fultz was around fifteen. Yeah. So that yeah. was Fultz interesting. Played, Fultz played sixteen, but yeah. he had four assists, two steals, one block, and he showed already at sixteen minutes. He's gonna be a good fantasy player, uh, if given the minutes. If he's gonna start, the minutes go up slowly, 24, 25, until probably reaches the max of 25, 26. That's enough. That's going to give you assists. The assist is going to be there. He's a good... Uh, assist, ever since. and some scoring. Scoring may be not as good, but 
uh, the assist, the assist and steals will be will be yeah. consistent. Someone like Marcus Smart maybe uh, not as good as Marcus Smart, but uh, somewhere there, somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's false. Uh, as for Cole, I think same thing. You just have to wait. I mean, I think Cole off the bench still has some value. Um, uh, well, never been a fan of Cole, but. If there are a lot of injuries in Orlando, maybe he gets hot in some games, scores yeah. 20 something off the bench, like Terrence Ross, something like that. But not consistently now if he's coming off the bench. Not like before he was a starter. He's always been the starter. So he's going to come off the bench, not as enthused with Cole, uh, not giving you a lot of uh, versatility with his stat line. Yeah. Plus, the it's not going to be. As fun as the stat lines would not be as fun as the fault stat lines. Usually it's more of scoring, right? Cole's really more of the scoring, a few assists here and there. Uh, very little steals, uh, no, yeah. no, no defensive stocks. So, but I think still worth you know holding on to and worth rostering until maybe another player is a better option, but. Uh, I think Fultz, like we said, Fultz is the better guy there in, in, in Orlando to hold. Plus, you know, you never know. Like we said yesterday, somebody Orlando like team. Well, Orlando Gary team. Harris got injured. Gary Harris See? injured his hamstring today. So, uh, well, that removes... Well, Gary Harris started. I predicted that, that he will start. So, now he's out. I'm, I'm sure for a while again because the hamstring injuries can linger. Now, you know, there's another open spot in the starting five. See? So, the Orlando so. curse continues. Yeah. Um, let's talk about two players, another two players face off. Uh, Jason Tatum had another great game and overall an MVP caliber season so far. Yes. Not just the fantasy wise, but um, in real basketball sets. And he. He is kind of reminded of you know Kevin Durant, right? He has they have a little bit of similarities there. Yes, people are comparing Tatum more to Kobe Prime, but I think he's really more like Durant. You no, know? the, the the well, he's not as tall as Durant. That's that the same body type, but the stats that they give, and even in fantasy, when you talk about fantasy, when we're First round pick, okay, I got Embiid, I got Jokic, I know how to build around them, they're big men, or I got uh, Steph Curry, you know, and we're going to go with assists, threes, and everything. When you say when you say KD, when you say Tatum, that's a problem all the time. Like, what's the direction of your team? Yeah. Because we think they're not really, really, really good in one category except scoring. What else would, where else would I build? But actually, if you look at the stats like this year, they've been all around. I mean... They have given the blocks, they've given the trees, scoring, rebounding, and even assists there yeah. for both yeah. of them. And the percentages are really, really good. That's something I never expected from Tatum. Durant, I did. Tatum this year at 50-something percent, 52, I think, or 51. That's I don't know if it's sustainable. I don't know if you think it's sustainable, but uh, that's that's been a sur- surprise to me. No, it's been it surprise. can be, maybe, if it drops off closer to the 49, maybe. Still, that's already that, good. That, that's good. Yeah, that's that's good. Really I mean, good. Yeah. for someone who's a who's a scorer, that's perimeter. really good. Yeah, perimeter scorer. Yeah. But the thing about the thing about Tatum is that he doesn't force shots anymore. Mm, he drives yeah. the ball more. He attacks the basket more. More moves, more post moves, or more drive to the basket moves. Rather than you know, remember before when he was just shooting all those uh, three pointers, right? Yeah. Similar to KD. KD doesn't force career stuff. high in assists. Yeah. He yeah. Does, KD yeah. doesn't force stuff, right? He he just picks his spots, knows where to go. He can really control the offense uh, like he's been doing. And so far... Or KD the, or Tatum? Tatum. You know why? Okay. Because... KD apparently... Is one of the most used players in the NBA this season. Yes, he is. Yes, yes. I, 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 that as someone who owns KD in a couple of leagues and been doing well, uh, that's scary. Um, I think. But their minutes are the same, huh? Per game. They're, they're, 
their minutes are exactly the same, 36 minutes and 40 seconds, actually. That, that's eerily, eerily the same. But, uh, of course, one is younger. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Tatum is younger one is, than Tatum. One is 34 already. And he's been playing and, center. He played some center today. And that's what I was going to say. You know, if he plays more center, maybe get center eligibility. And if that is the case, I'll go KD. Because, you know, a center spot for KD, small forward, power forward, center gives so much flexibility. But I understand where you're coming from. I also like Tatum more because it's just hard to not see KD going down sometime. I'm not saying out for the season, but some sort of an injury that will put him out for maybe a week or two. or Because yeah, we've been talking or, about these old guys like Chris Paul the other day, right? We talked about yeah. him. They're probably going to load manage him. He's probably going to be a little more preserved so that he'll be better in the playoffs. Like LeBron, we talked about LeBron as well. You know, uh, even the someone brought up about the Kareem Chase uh but we've already discussed that before that, you know, even if he doesn't play all 82 games this season, he'll probably get there. Um, he, it's just a matter of when, right? But since they're older, they're preserving their body a little more. Uh, same thing with the o- other older guys. Uh, well, I, I couldn't you bet- think of some, you know, uh, as some, some players in the range of the KD. Uh, it's around 34. 35 range. Yeah. Dame, uh, you mentioned around Dame, 30s. yeah. Harden. You know, Harden, uh, yeah. These three players. Mentioned the Chris Paul. Um, I don't know how you value Chris Paul these days, but uh, Pat, Pat Rocco just mentioned to me about the trade. Chris Paul for, K- uh, for Killian and KCP. And then he asked me about my 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 view on that. In a 20 team league, in a 20 team, apparently it's a raging debate in their league. So that's something I said that's very good to talk about, uh, in a way. And I mean, how do you value CP3? Because he gave me the, he gave he gave me the stats of CP3 this year: nine points, four rebounds, nine assists. Before he got injured, nothing much. And if compared with Killian, really, really close, really yeah. close. Killian without Cade. I mean, Killian without Cade. Really close to what Chris Paul was doing. So how can you veto that? That was the argument. And yeah, actually, uh, uh, that is very interesting. I said I won't veto it in a 20 team league. That, um, well, I think depth is important there. And then the stats that he gave, plus he, he, he was sure that it's no collusion, no newbie managers, the managers are experienced. So I said, trust the managers. But I, interesting to see if you're surprised by how low Chris Paul's value are, is and what you think of that trade. Not really surprised, but. Um. Yeah, it's just that I think at this point, some some managers would just you know frustrated with these old guys. You know, Butler is another player, right? Players like those. Um, th- would you do that th- trade? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not the type of player who would do something like that. Right? I give away my Chris Paul for Killian or or KCP, but you know. I, mm-hmm. I agree understand. with you. You probably won't. I probably won't veto it because KCP is also someone who can yeah. contribute. I mean, yeah, it's a two for one trade. I know Chris Paul was picked a little way higher, not a, just a little way higher. But if they're not performing, I mean, Kawhi, for example, how would you value <laughs> that? Right. Uh, actually, it is funny because you mentioned Kawhi. He mentioned Kawhi also. He actually when we were talking. If Kawhi, Kawhi's name uh, popped up, he said, like Kawhi, what will you do with Kawhi? I mean, that's name value, but you're not going to do anything with him. Uh, you could trade yeah. him for for somebody like Kyle Anderson and people will just say, why? Well, how can you veto that if, if there's some players playing and yeah. the other players not playing? So, so yeah. It, and it's it seems funny, like but... he's not going to be playing a lot more games, right? That's true. That's true. Yes. So, so it's interesting. He's out again. Want, He's out again for we just couple want of games. people to yeah, we want people to know this so that you know don't look at name values during trades. You know, at, you have to really It's hard study not to, to be honest, it's hard not to. Yes. It's hard not to. Um whether I think very rarely would people not give uh that name value consideration. 
Yes. Most of the time, I understand. you'll probably give that name value because of the ratio. Unless, of course, players like Kawhi, who you don't really know, has played, what, five, six games overall? Um, it's different, right? You don't, you don't know what to expect. Chris Paul, you know, somehow, you know, I won't veto that deal, but I could understand if some managers would react as well. Yes. I understand. Same, same, same wavelength. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, you can't uh, blame them for, for complaining about the trade like this. But, yes. uh, having said that, you sh- we should be able to explain. Like, in our leagues, we, most of the time, or all the time, we explain be- before we veto anything. Well, we kind of tell them it's they have to rework it because you know uh, the the perception is this and that, right? So we don't give tips as well. We don't tell them to remove this player, add this player because that's like us colluding with that those two managers, right? Me suggesting to you to just add this and this to make it work. You make it work. Maybe that's uh, that's how uh, that's how we do it. But uh, yeah. Uh, Interesting. I think that's why he messaged me. He messaged me just before this recording, and I haven't really responded yet. But um, that's interesting. But yeah, KD. So your Tatum on, on the KD Tatum face off. Um, I'm Tatum. I'm Tatum. Tatum. I I I mentioned that, but I, when I looked at the stats of KD, it was really good. Uh, really, really way better than Tatum. But I still. Tatum has made it close enough. That uh, peace of mind is important also in fantasy. Uh, we'll just we'll just keep our sanity and our peace of mind. And no, there's another both. thing. If both those players injured gets injured, you know, assuming they have the same injury, sprained ankle, for example, Tatum probably comes back first, right? I would think so. Yes, right? I, would think I mean so. that's I, I that's the so. general perception. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's uh, so scary when I found out that the minutes that they've been playing, one of the top uh, in the NBA right now is KD. And uh, they might scale back his minutes. I don't know how they're going to do that because they don't have Ben Simmons right now, right? He's injured. Um, no one's there really other than KD. Kyrie at this point is so quiet. You don't even notice uh, what he's doing on the floor. Yeah, it's really KD. KD's really the one carrying this uh, KD and Claxton, Nets team. Those two, those two players are yeah. the most fantasy and not relevant, but they 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 just catch your attention, both those guys. Uh, so yeah, comment down below. Who, who would you rather or who do you prefer between the two? Um, and like as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share, and follow us as well as Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And we're not sure we're going to have one tomorrow uh, because I'll be out, but we'll try to get one between tomorrow and Saturday as well. All right, good luck, guys. Tomorrow, one game. Time to beef up your rosters with some nice ads. We've talked about them. All the... um, a lot of the things we talked about are on the Facebook page. We'll upload it as well on the website. And with that, we'll see you guys again when we see you. Bye, guys.